Philippines. They are accompanied here by their director, Professor Edu Abraham. Ang ibig sabihin ng gabelan ay FTP and Dance Ensemble. In 1993, Contra Gabi was appointed President of the Music and Dance Ensemble by the Dean of the College of Arts and Letters for their significant trend-setting and visionary contribution. The group was awarded in February 1996 the UP Deliman Chancellor's Award for Outstanding Achievement in the Arts Performing Arts category. Mark. 
marketing communications. Of course, we would like to acknowledge the celebrities and personalities and standees are featured here for lending their star power and for giving a Filipino face to the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. So at this time, I would like to call on Ms. Amy Gonzalez, SML of Asia Mall Manager, to give the welcome remarks. Ms. Gonzalez, a big round of Ang UN na matubunin sa suliranin ng tao. 
Ngunit ngayon, ang pinakabigat na sumiran ay ng tao ng buhusan tayong tigan ay ang buhay ng tao. Ang ating, kung tawagin, ay pinanggagaling ang ating kabuhayan, ang ating life support system. Nanganganib ang ating karagatan, nanganganib ang ating kagubatan, nanganganib ang pinanggagalingan ng lahat ng uri ng buhay sa balat ng lupa. At kapag hindi natin natin ito, ang pag-init ng panahon ay tututok hindi lamang sa 1.5 degrees centigrade buwag nang gumamit tayo ng mga makina. Aabot ito ng 2 degrees centigrade. At maaaring mabot ng 3 at pagdating yan ay hindi na natin mapipigil ang pag-init ng lupa. Sana hindi mangyari yan sapagkat merong napakagandang planeta rito sa ating galaxy, ang Venus. Noong araw ay merong hamog sa Venus. May moisture. Kaya may buhay pa. Uminit na uminit ang Venus. May makikita mo ang Venus ay napakagandang makinang na bola. Marmol. Wala ng hamog, wala ng moisture, at wala ng buhay. Kapag nagpatuloy ang pag-init ng ating baby, hindi malayo-layo at tulad tayo sa Venus matapos ang isang milyong taon ay wala ng buhay. Gusto natin magpatuloy ang buhay dito at ang ginagawa ng UN, ang ginagawa ng literato ng UN, ang meeting itong conference of parties sa Marrakesh ay isang namang mahabang akbang upang ang buhay ng tao sa palat ng lupa ay nagpatuloy magpahabang panahon. Maraming salamat at pinabati ko po ang UN sa kanyang kamatakilang katika. I will do the demonstration later, Your Excellency. Thank you very much, Senator Sani Alvarez. And uh, I would like to acknowledge also the presence of the Executive Director of the Earth Savers UNESCO Dream Center and my very, very good friend, Mrs. Cecil Alvarez. Ang susunod na pagtagapagsalita ay magbibigay ng mensahe ng pakikisa. Siya ang nagtatag at tagapamuno ngayon ng Dynamic Team Company na naghahandog sa mga kabataang Pilipino ng alternatibo sa mga palaboy sa kalye sa pamamagitan ng edukasyon, sa paglalapit ng paralan sa mga hindi kinakaugaliang lugar at ng simenteryo at mga tambakan ng basura. Ito yung tinatawag na Cariton Classroom. Kilala niyo na ba siya? Noong Marso 2009, itinambok siya na bayani ng CNN bilang bahagi ng programa ng network na ito sa pagpaparangal sa mga individual na may kahangahangang kontribusyon sa pagtulong sa iba. Hinirang din siyang bayani ng taon ng CNN noong 2009. Siya ang symbolic image natin para sa SDG 1, No Poverty. Palakpakan natin si Mr. Efren Peña Florida Jr. Magandang maga po sa inyong lahat at uh, this will be indeed a pleasure to meet you all and uh, also grateful to be part of this uh, endeavor. Um, I'm an educator and I'm a teacher by profession and I spend my time now as a volunteer teacher in an uh, open high school uh, dropout program in state education in, in my town in Cavite. And uh, here in our country, there are about, uh, I think, 5% of the total population of school-aged children uh, and youth are currently not in school. And moreover, additional numbers are at great, of, uh, great risk of dropping out. And uh, poverty is uh, one of the reasons why Filipino children could not get an access to education. And the Philippine econ economy may have expanded rapidly in recent years, but poverty in our country is still severe and widespread in most rural areas and in some urban places as well. Uh, despite of uh, economic success. So more and more families from, uh, from the Harley sites are moving to urban uh, areas like Metro Manila and hoping for better living conditions. But real life soon catches up with them, uh, hoping uh, that they could find work, but they could not find even a single work and have no, no place to stay. The entire families must, must live in the street, in cemeteries, in dump sites, marketplaces, and even under the bridge. To ensure their survival, children had to contribute in their uh, family's income. 
So looking for work and, and employment becomes your prior priority rather than having education. And as an educator, I believe that education is a powerful tool to fight ignorance and poverty, to make one person productive and beneficial to one society, and to have a purpose in life. I grew up poor, living in poverty, but um, someone helped me realize that poverty is not an hindrance to dream, to hope and make that dream a reality. And that poverty should not limit your creativity and your capability to do better and to add value in life. And one is never too poor to, to think of ways to help others and to give back to, to society. And to end poverty, we need to provide quality education and to give that to every child and help them uh, realize their, their full potential. We need to ensure that each person receives proper attention, support, and care of basic necessities of life. But most importantly, I believe that one must realize that the fight we need to end first is the fight within. That one must change his mindset to a perspective where he decides to, to put a stop on apathy and indifference of life, but instead to hope once more and dream again. And I believe that uh, all of us want to have a much better world for, for ourselves, for our children, and for the generation next to us. And hopefully today we come together with one dream, one conviction, and one great expectation to build a better future, to make our life worthwhile, and to create a world where love, peace, and hope prevail. Thank you very much. God bless you. Our next speaker will also give a solidarity message. Nag-viral siya ng 2013, matapos tayong hagupitin ng Yolanda. In that same year, during the Climate Change Conference, a delegate from the Philippines spoke emphatically and passionately about the need to act now to avert more cataclysmic, cataclysmic climate events. That man was like the lone voice in that Climate Change Conference calling on the world to change its ways before it was too late. He is now the Executive Director of Greenpeace in Southeast Asia and the symbolic image for SDG 7, which is Affordable and Clean Energy. Let's put our hands together for Mr. Yem Sano! Thank you very much, uh, Tessa. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Um, pag naririnig po natin yung uh, um, musika ng Contra Gabi and uh, pagkasama natin yung mga personal heroes natin at ulat ni Efren, siguradong magandang araw yung uh, ating uh, nararanasan. Kaya magandang araw po sa inyong lahat at uh, nakikisa po tayo sa pagdiriwang ng ikapitong putisang kaarawan ng United Nations. Sita po, ispilis na po itong malaking karangalan, maging bahagi nito. Alam niyo, ngayong uh, na, nandito tayo, we, we really uh, stand amidst very rapid change in the world around us. Sa, sa atin pong uh, uh, realization, ano, even 10 years ago, hindi pa po na-invento yung iPhone. At yung Uber ay isang fantasy lamang. At yung Twitter, hindi pa rin na-invento 10 years ago lamang. Pero sa nakaraang sa punta, ang dami natin nakita ang pagbabago sa paligid natin, magkasira ng kalikasan at pagdami pa lalo ng taong mahihirap. Uh, sa maraming bahagi sa mundo, hindi natin inasahan na yung mga, uh, pag, mga, conflict, mga, mga conflict sa iba't ibang lugar sa doon sa daigdig ay makakarating sa ating, uh, sa ating consciousness at sa, sa, sa ating mga uh, baybayin. Alam niyo po, marami nagtatanong sa atin kung bakit kailangan uh, mas maging patay tingin pa yung ating uh, pakikiisa sa uh, pagsulong ng karapatan ng mga uh, lalo ng mga inaapi at uh, pagprotekta sa kalikasan. Alam niyo po, simple lang yung dahilan. Tuwing umaga tayo ay gigising, kailangan magkaroon tayo ng lakas ng loob na harapin ang ating mga anak. Tignan sila sa kanilang mga mata at sabihin natin na nag-iiwan tayo sa kanila ng mas magandang kinabukasan. I want to leave you a better world and we should be able to look our children in the eye and tell them I have done my best. Ayaw din po natin na magtrabaho lang na magtrabaho na magtrabaho upang protektahan ang kalikasan at ang mga taong nakadepende sa mga lusog na kalikasan. Ang gusto po natin ay magbuo ng 
isang mundo kung saan hindi na, hindi na natin kailangan protektahan ang mga tao at ang, at ang planeta. Sa ganitong uh, sense din po, itong 17 goals na nakikita natin sa exhibit na ito, sa araw na ito, sana po ay hindi na lamang sa maging goals. And we dream of a future where we don't need these goals anymore. That's why by 2030, we want... But what we want to happen is that these goals become obsolete. We want to achieve these goals sooner than, 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 than necessary. And by 2030, I hope that we see each other again and congratulate ourselves that we have achieved these goals. Dear friends, today is really a time of celebration. No? Dahil the birthday po ng UN, at uh, hindi po yan biro, no? na magkaroon ng 71 years ng pagkakaisa at solidarity sa buong daigdig. Pero panahon din po ito ng commemoration. Commemoration at pag-alala dun sa mga, mga tinamaan na, no? na mga nagsasuffer sa buong daigdig. We commemorate those who have fallen during the night and we commemorate Uh, and we commemorate those uh, who continue to confront the biggest injustices out there. So this year's United Nations Day is intended to highlight the concrete actions, yung mga hakbang na tunay na hakbang na gagawin natin to help achieve the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. And I enjoyed all of you in taking those concrete steps. Ihiram lang po ng mga salita. I'd like to borrow a few words from one of my favorite stories, The Lord of the Rings. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I quote Gandalf when he said, Some believe that it is only great power that can hold evil in check. But it is not what I have found. It is the small, everyday deeds of every done, every of ordinary folk that keep the darkness at bay. Small acts of courage, kindness, and love. So together, all of our concrete actions and acts of courage, kindness, and love will all combine into a billion acts of courage, and it, it would make this world the world that we all dream of: a green and peaceful world, a world. We can truly, with honor and pride, pass on to our children. So, maraming salamat po, and as we celebrate UN Day, let us reaffirm our individual and collective commitment uh, to live up to the ideals of the United Nations Charter and make this world a better place for all. Maganda umaga po at maraming salamat.
ating tagapagsalita ay may dalang mensahe mula sa pamahalaan. Siya ang Assistant Secretary, Performance and Projects Management Office ng Office of the Cabinet Secretary, Office of the President. Please welcome Dr. Evelyn Cruzada. Chidoro Noxin Jr., Ambassador Designate, Philippine Mission to the United Nations, Mr. Ola Green, UN Resident Coordinator, Mr. Harrison Alvarez, former Senator and Founder, Earth Savers UNESCO Dream Center, Ms. Alvarez, uh, Mr. Yem Yano, and Mr. Efren Pina Floreda, and other guests, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to extend my sincerest gratitude to the United Nations Information Center for inviting the Office of the Cabinet Secretary to this event. I am here in front of you today on behalf of the Cabinet Secretary, Leon Chiopi Ibasco Jr., to deliver a message he very much wanted to convey but is unable to do so because he is very busy preparing for an official trip to Japan starting tomorrow. As you all know, we at the Office of the Cabinet Secretary and partners from various government departments and agencies have been very hands-on in organizing a series of summits and consultative workshops with the different sectors of society to elicit insights and empower them to identify proposals that address their concerns and issues. As of last week, we already conducted 14 such summits and consulted as many as nearly 7,000 from the 14 various sectors in the country. We promote grassroots solutions to grassroots problems. This is what President Duterte's administration is all about, inclusive and participatory in the process of determining the Philippine direction in terms of economic development and national security. With the agreement of the world leaders during the, summer, the UN Summit on September 2015, of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals that built on the Millennium Development Goals, these 17 SDGs of the 2030 Agenda on Sustainable Development has been also adopted by the Philippine government and will be the basis of the Philippine Development Plan as well as the National Security Plan that are being developed as of the moment. The thrust of the current administration is highlighted in both the inaugural speech and the State of the Nation address of the President, which is to make people's lives better, safer, and healthier while bringing back faith and trust in government. While each administration has identified a six-year medium term that serves as the framework for its government, President Duterte has adopted this, this uh, theme, Malasakit at Pagbabago, Tungo sa Kaunaran at Katiwasayan, or Towards Development and Security. The Sustainable Development Goals are very apt and very much represented in the President's Tunay na Malasakit at Pagbabago or Real Concern and True Change type of government. Tunay na Pagbabago is that which transforms. Tunay na Malasakit is ensuring that no one is left behind. The cabinet cluster system is up for reorganization. 
organization and will be the primary mechanism of the executive branch to direct a unified and systematic approach towards the realization of the Zero Plus 10 economic agenda, which was crafted sometime in June, and the 10 Plus Plus social development agenda and security agenda towards the administration's development and security policy. These are all hints on the administration's vision for a Philippines with real programs that truly benefit the poorest and the belief that there can be no real development where there is no security, where the public is not safe, and where there is no good governance. The Zero Plus Ten Economic Agenda is supposed to be in the areas of macro policy, tax reform, competitiveness, and ease of doing business, infrastructure spending, rural development, land administration and management, human capital development, science, technology, and the arts, social protection, and responsible parenthood and reproductive health law. Last August, the Social Development Initiative summits gave initial form to the 10 plus plus social development agenda and among the emerging priorities are rural development, democratization of land and property, sustainable livelihood and employment, inclusive education, culture sensitive development program, continuity of the peace process, government accountability for community development, equitable land and natural resource utilization, human capital investment, and self-determination of indigenous peoples and cultural groups. This will become more holistic over time as the sectoral summits reach their conclusion sometime on the first week of November and add missing facets to the emerging social development agenda. Our next big task is to harmonize the results of these summits in order to complement the nascent economic and social development agenda in pursuit of materializing the dream of Filipinos that by 2040, the Philippines shall be a country where all citizens are free from hunger and poverty, have equal opportunities, enabled by fair and just society that is governed by order and unity. A nation where families live together, thriving in vibrant, culturally diverse, and resilient communities. This agenda are the embodiment of our country's cooperation with the rest of the nations of the world in bringing about true and meaningful transformation of people's lives for the better. The five Ps of the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals are also the focus of this administration. We have also put in place our own programs for people, planet, prosperity, peace, and partnership as the country's share in realizing sustainable development goals by 2030. For the next six years, the foresight of the Philippines against the global backdrop are as follows. One, achieve sustainable development in the economy, society, and environment. Two, recommit to realize the off-track MDGs. Three, poverty reduction. Four, nobody will be left behind. Five, needs of children, youth, people living with disability, older people, migrants, and indigenous peoples are reflected in the plans. Six, interrelated challenges in inequality, unemployment, violence, extremism, and climate change, among others, are adequately addressed. Seven, gender equality and women empowerment are crucial. The administration is wasting no time. It is working full steam on building the proper and strong foundations to make these goals happen as this medium term's contribution to the realization of the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. None of the plans and the goals will come to fruition 
if we don't work together consistently towards the same direction in the path of sustainable development for all. Come the Philippines in the world. Thank you, United Nations Information Center, for making the Office of the Cabinet Secretary a part of your work and promoting greater understanding to the UN's work to peoples everywhere, and particularly for this exhibit on the SDGs. When we have more and more people understanding these goals and how each of us can contribute to making them a reality, we find the daunting work ahead more and more manageable, doable, and achievable. We hope that with the opening of this United Nations Exhibit on Sustainable Development Goals, likewise open in the consciousness of the Filipinos and all peoples of all nations and the importance of sustainable development. Count the Office of the Cabinet Secretary in the work as well as the Office of the President. Thank you. Maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. Thank you, Dr. Fursada. Uh, before I call on our next keynote speaker, I would like to acknowledge the arrival of SM Senior Vice President for Marketing Communications, Ms. Millie Dizon, to whom we owe so much. Ms. Dizon's generosity has made it possible for us to have this uh, venue, this beautiful venue for the exhibit opening, as well as for the UN Day celebration later today at the musical. Thank you very much, Ms. Dizon. Okay, I will now call on um, the highest official of the United Nations in the Philippines. He is also the UN, uh, the UNDP resident representative, the humanitarian coordinator for the Philippines, and director of the UN Information Center in Manila, in my boss. I present to you the resident coordinator of the UN in the Philippines, Mr. Ula Aldrin. Uh, Ambassador Desplate uh, to the United Nations, Mr. Theodoro Loxon Jr., uh, Assistant Secretary Dr. Evelyn Cruzada, the Office of the Cabinet Secretary, uh, former Senator Harrison Alvarez, also founder of Earth Savers UNESCO Dream Center, and Cecil Alvarez, the Executive Director of First day the UNESCO Dream Center. Uh, SM Senior Vice President for Marketing and Communications, Ms. Mili Dizon. Uh, former Climate Change Commissioner, Mr. Yeb Sun. Uh, nowadays, I believe, Executive Director of Greenpeace in Southeast Asia. Uh, Mr. Efron Penaflorida, founder of the Dynamic Team Company and the winner of the CNN Hero Award 2009, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, friends and human colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Maganang umaga po sa inyong lahat. At, uh, thank you. At this time last year, the United Nations celebrated its 70th anniversary, a special moment marked by the lighting in new and blue of famous landmarks around the world. The SM Wall of Asia Lead Globe outside of here uh, was one such landmark. And viewed from Google Earth, the signature blue of the United Nations bloomed almost simultaneously in 70 places uh, over the planet, including right here uh, at the SM Wall of Asia. It was a moment when countries around the world seemed to be intertwined by the benevolent light of the United Nations. And the United Nations 17th anniversary year was monumental for another reason. It was in September last year, all 193 member states of the United Nations adopted the 2013 Agenda for Sustainable Development, what we refer to as the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, which this exhibit here will showcase today. Since then, these goals have become our collective responsibility. The, co 
commitments that member states have made and that we all have made are ambitious and transformative. And we now have 15 years to deliver on these commitments. We have 15 years to end extreme poverty, hunger and malnutrition, preventable deaths of newborns and children under five, as well as to end the epidemics of AIDS, tuberculosis, malaria and other neglected or neglected tropical diseases. We have 15 years to achieve universal health coverage and free primary and secondary education, as well as to end discrimination against women and girls. We have 15 years to transition to a low carbon economy and change unsustainable patterns of consumption and production. We will have to deliver on the 2030 Agenda regardless of the challenges, obstacles and setbacks that we no doubt will experience during the years to come. In this first year anniversary, or SDG Year 1, over 50 governments and a great many uh, private corporations, businesses, scientists, civil society organizations have taken serious measures to put the SDGs at the heart of their policies and actions. At the local level, numerous cities and municipalities are formulating plans to achieve the goals. Thousands of communities representing different sectors of society have taken up the cudgels for the SDGs through local level action. And the Philippines, of course, has already started a serious process of implementation, as we just heard. The Philippines government is building on the lessons learned from the Millennium Development Goals and their own experiences. It is starting to integrate the new goals into its national economic and social planning. And all these steps have been momentum to limiting climate change, advancing gender equality, mitigating natural disasters, addressing mass migration and reducing inequality. In July this year, 2016, 22 governments, including the Philippines, presented their plans to implement the Sustainable Development Goals to the United Nations. And these plans now show how the SDGs could be made a central framework for national development. They will help to make sure that actions are aligned, that there is synergy amongst the programs, and that funds are used as efficiently as possible. Development cooperation will likewise be aligned with the SDGs. Global support for the Paris Agreement on Climate Change is also accelerating. To date, governments of 55 nations have ratified the agreement, including the world's largest emitters of greenhouse gases, China and the United States. Momentum is building in other sectors as well. A significant transformation is happening in how business is being conducted. We're seeing a greater focus on social, economic and environmental dimensions of development. And the UN too is moving towards joint working in support of aligned policies, from focusing on projects to convening stakeholders and ensuring that efforts are aligned so that partners can work together in an efficient and effective manner. So great progress has been made, but much more remains to be done to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. The Sustainable Development Goals lay out specific targets for everyone towards solving the challenges that people around the world are facing. So how do we stay the course? This is where people, the most important stakeholders to the goals, come in. Public support and public pressure are indispensable if we are to transform the Sustainable Development Goals from just goals to a reality. Children and youth have a vital role to play. They are the face of social movements, they drive social change and they carry the torch that will guide us towards a more sustainable future for generations to come. SDG Year 1 allows us the opportunity to mark our achievements thus far, to resolve to do more to make SDGs and Sustainable Development Goals a reality, and most importantly to acknowledge governments, businesses, civil society groups, academia and young people around the world for all their efforts. 
If all stakeholders keep up the effort to be in the sustainable world, achieving the targets of the Sustainable Development Goals in the next 15 years, and changing the way that we live today and our prospects for our future and the future of our children and their children is not impossible. A special advisor to the Secretary General for the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and Climate Change, Dr. David Navarro, has said, We really do not have a plan B. There is no planet B. Thus, we as one human system will continue to support the government and our development partners and we will do our utmost to help you make a difference for people and the planet in the coming years living up to the new agenda. We will work with you side by side to progressively improve the channels for participation of multiple stakeholders in this process. It is essential, as has already been mentioned, that no one is left behind, which is in fact the key unifying concept of 2030 agenda, a message of solidarity. The challenges are great, but at the same time the world is a world of promises and opportunity, with many, many working to fulfill the dreams and aspirations of our peoples. If we work together, both inside and between nations mobilizing all good forces, we can achieve a better world of peace, opportunity and dignity for all. Again, before I end my message, I would like to express my appreciation to ESSA for their continued support for the work of the UN family here in the Philippines. Last year, the UN and the Department of Foreign Affairs celebrated the UN Day here at the Music Hall of SM Hall of Asia. And this year, SM again, is again graciously hosting this year's celebration of Human Day. I congratulate my colleagues at UNIC Manila for this creative outreach initiative to promote the sustainable development goals. And I would like to, start to acknowledge and thank all the Filipino celebrities who have lent their star power to help popularize the SDGs here in the Philippines. These celebrity studies up in the back of the hall here will help to shine a spotlight on the goals. For the generosity of the celebrity in sharing their image for the SDG campaign, the United Nations family is deeply grateful. So thank you to all of you who have joined us here today to celebrate the United Nations 71st anniversary. Good that we come together 15 years from today, hopefully still alive, older, sure, but hopefully also transformed by a better world. And that we are able to say to each other, we have arrived at the future we dreamed of. That would be really something, wouldn't it? So may we all live to see the achievement of the SDGs in the year 2030. Thank you very much and have a happy United Nations Day.
that human enterprise can trump human folly anytime, that engenders the sustainable development goals to which 193 UN members, including my country, signed on in 2015 to set the development agenda for the next 15 years. It's been over a year since September 2015 when the UN member states agreed on the SDGs, the successor to the Millennium Development Goals that began in the year 2000. The SDGs include ending poverty, ending hunger, achieving food security, and promoting sustainable agriculture, ensuring inclusive and equitable quality education, ensuring access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all, and promoting sustained, inclusive, and sustainable economic growth with full and productive employment and decent work for all. These are goals that, insofar as they are achieved, by the same measure, forestall and avert or at least ameliorate the crisis that prompted the creation of the United Nations. These are the goals that continue to fire the enthusiasm and energy of its women and men. I look at the standees of your SDG champions featured in this remarkable exhibit and I cannot find a more worthy set of advocates. Casey Concepcion, Anne Curtis, Ding Dong Dantas, Gary Valenciano, Daphne Osenia Paz, Paolo Abrera, Noel Cabano, Efren Peña Florida, Yep Sano, Sabrina O'Keefe. Last year, when the UN marked its 70th anniversary, Secretary General Ban Ki moon made clear why, more than ever, a sense of solidarity remains as important as ever. He said, the world faces many crises, and the limits of collective international action are painfully clear. Yet no single country or organization can address today's challenges alone. We Filipinos well recall what that meant, as we mark the third anniversary of Super Typhoon Haiyan or Yolanda two weeks from now. Within hours, after the full extent of the devastation from the strongest cyclone ever to hit land became known, the U.S. issued a global flash appeal on behalf of the Philippines. That message, besides bringing in an immediate 193 million through the U.N., struck a chord in people's hearts around the world, making possible the unprecedented billions of dollars in assistance and the hundreds of relief workers that poured into Yolanda devastated areas. Warships anchored alongside the devastation to relieve and rebuild rather than destroy. It is in crisis and response that the UN shows its true self. Not as a mere forum for talk and threat, for the promises and pretenses coming from passing leaders, but as people of goodwill and unflagging commitment, with their feet on the ground, with their hands busy mending the broken places, and their faces, yes, their faces, facing always toward a better future. Our UN Chief Officer in Manila, the UNDP's resident coordinator, Mr. Ula Algren here, made an eloquent pitch for SDGs to Filipino businessmen last year. In urging them to make investments to lead to the Philippines achieving the SDGs, he raised this inescapable logic. When business deliberately sets out to build its bottom line on enterprises that empower ordinary people, it doesn't end up subtracting from its profits. On the contrary, by ensuring that its markets stay healthy, happy, and materially comfortable, living in safe environments, business adds to they multiplies its ROI. No one understood this better than Mr. Henry C., who I met when he started building the first giant mall on Edson. Henry, I said, where's the money in this gigantic building? The rich shop in boutiques abroad. Slowly, he explained to me that there is more money among common folk than you will ever find in all the Forbes parks. Treat them with respect, he said. Offer them fine places where they can enjoy with their families in dignity and they will come. For everyone is entitled to joy. And they came. Mr. <clears throat> 
the challenge is done. According to estimates provided by Mr. Algren, the unmet investment needs of the SDGs are estimated in the range of 3 to 7 trillion US dollars a year in developing countries alone. At first blush, it shows the magnitude of the challenge. But on second thought, it simply means so much opportunity to seize for people and corporations with so much resources but nowhere good to invest them in. In the words of Mr. Algren, it's essential to see sustainable development as actually linked to the core business strategy of a corporation. Ensuring profit over time is linked to the sustainability of our environment, our natural resources, and development for the people who make up the workforce and customers of the corporation. Going back to our rallying cry, we're all in this together. Ensuring achievement of the SDGs in the next 15 years would mean all stakeholders putting their best at the table. The government and the private sector, as well as development partners, multilateral banks, research institutions and advocacy organizations. The UN can continue to enable this process of cooperation among all the stakeholders by providing the avenues for sharing knowledge and information for technology transfer and encouraging the widespread adoption of good practices. In short, you in the UN provide the venue and the table where people can sit down to talk and it's potluck. Everyone comes with their own contribution and you know the spirit of the potluck engenders. Not the desire to take more, but where everyone is host and guest to share desire that others partake of more. Hospitality is ingrained in every human being. Be he a king in his court, a bedouin in his tent, a farmer in his hut, and a poor Scottish gentleman in what I can only describe as a makeshift hut in the Highlands, as I myself experience. It is true Filipino peacekeepers have a record we can be proud of. But we would wish as well and more so to be active in those parts of the world that are not in conflict and in undertakings where there is a great challenge to make a difference for the better in how people live aside from protecting their lives. In recent years, the UN has come under criticism from around the world. Its relevance question, even as conflicts and disasters occur in all corners of the planet requiring its intervention. Such criticism forgets that the UN can only reach as far as those creating or contributing to the crisis will let them. Most the powers and principalities, to use the old language, that in small numbers compose, yet for the most part direct, the United Nations. Across the continents, this new air of inwardness is palpable. The obsession to look in and not give up. Nationalist movements and political parties enjoy a rising influence, finding cause to agitate local populations against a steady stream of migrants from countries in conflict and torment such as Syria and Libya, Iraq and Afghanistan. Pawns in the great game that continues from Kipling's day to this. People led on by short-sighted local leaders with a long view only of their self-interest could instinctively call for shutting down borders to fend off terrorism, drugs, criminal syndicates and alien influence. But we all know that in this day and age, shutting down cannot be the long-term solution to problems. Nations inevitably return to the conclusion that they cannot ignore the neighbors with whom they share borders. This is not the first time that the call for an inward-looking force is gaining traction around the world. The last time led to the war that created the United Nations. To stay relevant, the UN must try really hard to understand that force and ride it, reining it back from the precipice, urging it in the right direction. Sure, it will still be inward-looking, but it won't be helping itself to everything on the table by welcoming others to partake of what's there because there is enough and because by providing for everyone as they come in, they too bring something to the table. 
together we can do it. Apart, well, we know what comes of standing apart and looking out only for ourselves at everyone else's expense. The next big world conflict will leave nothing with which to build another United Nations. With the SDGs as spearhead, we can find ever new ways to come closer to the goals the UN set on its foundation. When the UN capped its first decade, while great powers were still stalling the advance toward internationalism, UN Secretary Doug Hammarskjöld, the first patriot, not of his country, but the world, even as Wallenberg gave his life to save peoples, not Swedes, Hammarskjöld offered this council. The way to safeguard what you rightly want to defend is not isolation. The way is a vigorous and self-confident development in free contact with the world of the special qualities and assets of your nation and your people. A development which should give them their just weight in the international balance. Thus, in giving to the world what is specifically ours, we manifest and protect our national character while accepting changes and opening our minds to the influences of the world. Together, we can find our way with such counsel as our guide. Trust me, we keep helping, helping each other to find and celebrate the best in ourselves. Pivoting firmly away from the worst parts of human nature and turning with greater resolve and deeper commitment to its better angels. Good day and good luck. A happy United Nations Day to you all. Thank you. Thank you. 